Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our live stream here on Thursday night. It's our subscriber stream. We just had a submission. Excel Poker. I'd like to show my first Banco. It's from Excel Poker. First Banco. He calls it Banco Opening. Banco Gambit. All right, open. Thank you, Excel Poker, for submitting that. Good you. Welcome. Everybody, we've got our analysis stream tonight. I'm International Master William Pascal, hosting analysis stream with subscribers. Um, Mr. Coffee, thank you for the one man raid. Astrobate, good to see you. Don't forget, guys, to support the stream. Acerbate and, and Mr. Coffee can't do it by themselves. Bjock, welcome. We've got your game in the list. I've got Ripun, Morales, Yabates, Acerbate, Uber Driver, Jim, Excel Poker. And basically, Sumer, you're in there somewhere in the middle. Um, you should be in there around after Acerbate or so. Around Acerbate or Uber Driver. We've got you on the list, the unofficial list here. We had a one man raid for Mr. Coffee earlier. So what's up everybody? Um, I haven't been, have not been paying attention to the, to the Tata tournament. We are here to analyze your games or games selected by the subscribers. Flair, welcome. Good you. Again, thanks for joining us. I've been um I've been like feeling really weird every evening. I think I have long COVID, whatever they call it. I mean I'm I, I can't be positive anymore. But I'm still having some kind of like long term effect of it. Even though I wasn't very sick, I have this weird Weird, like, tiredness and fatigue that seems to set in around, well, right around the time when I would start streaming, like, around 5, 6 p.m. Every night, the exact same, like, the exact same feeling I have after COVID. Yeah, it's really weird. It doesn't matter, like, what I do, how much I worked, how much I slept, nothing. I feel this, like, sort of zombie. I feel like a zombie from around 5 p.m. in the evening, and then I feel normal again the next morning. Um, it seems to just sit in around around 6 p.m. 5 p.m. You know what just occurred to me though? I have a reason to be a zombie. I didn't have my evening coffee tonight. Oh my god. Every night I have a coffee around 5 or 6 p.m. and I totally forgot to have my coffee. It's a tragedy. Who? No wonder I feel weird tonight. It's, it's a little too late. I think we're going to go without. Damn, I almost never forget. I forgot my, my evening coffee. No wonder I feel like a zombie. Damn, I never forgot. I, mean, I don't remember the last time I forgot. It was so long ago. Okay, um, we're going to try to do without coffee. If I drink coffee now, it's, it's pushing it I'm a little bit late. I won't be able to sleep later. We're going to go without... We've got Repun versus Game Over Bro, Morales versus Sebir, Yabatis versus Butch, Astrobate against Johnny MX, Uber Drivers Game versus Idong, Jim versus Fosi, Excel Poker, and of course the Sumahara game. Bringing us to eight games. Yeah, I just feel tired, weirdly, even though I have to be I have to be over COVID. Um just just don't feel right it's it's weird but I hope you're doing well everybody um, I had a long walk today exercise just doesn't make a difference I could sit in the room all day or go for a good exercise and I still feel the same all right let's get started let me know if I forgot anybody's submissions we've got room for one more game so this was Repun playing this Canadian or Lebanese guy game over bro it's like a national master um, it's a 3-0 game so we can't expect too much quality and actually the game I think is later decided by 
a time scramble. But let's take a look, see if we find anything interesting here. So our hero, Ripun Bonsal, is Astrobeat fully grown? Ripun Bonsal playing white, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd4, knight d4, and then of course the accelerated dragon. I think the easiest variation in the Sicilian to learn, um, I've been playing it, it's very systematic. I've, I've been playing it since 1999 or so. Actually, that's a lie. I've been playing it since like 1990. Yeah, maybe around much earlier, 1995. I've been playing it since around 95. 94, 95. This is a 3 0 game. Yeah, Repun is white. Main line, accelerated dragon. But now you're supposed to play bishop c4. Instead, he makes an inaccuracy here, which is very, very common. f3. The question is how bad a mistake it really is. Yeah, you wonder why people submit the games they want. I mean, there's funny motivations. Yeah, they want to show off that they beat a strong player. Yeah, they don't submit the games. They, they should submit the games where they lost and, and they need to learn from. Absolutely husky. Astrobate always submits the games he wins. You know? I think, yeah, we learn more from the games we lost. Absolutely. It's just their egos are too big. I, I honestly, I take lose, losing hard too, and I, I hate to, I hate to see the games I lost, but you just gotta do it. Yeah. I mean, bishop c4 is is like the only good move in this position, literally. I think with move eleven, we tried to think of another way that we could possibly play. It's funny, there's like nothing. There's no other move. It's an amazing position in that respect. You think like, okay, white is white and white has the first move. White has only one good move in this position. That's crazy. Literally only one good move. It's hard to believe, honestly. I mean, the best move other than bishop c4 is probably bishop e2, but I think the black equalizes here because he will get in d5 in one move. So bishop c4 is the only move that doesn't allow black to get in d5, as Excel Poker points out. But instead, Ripun doesn't know theory, so he just plays f3 like it's a normal dragon. And it's funny, <clears throat> I think I was just looking at this because I had a correspondence game, but it was something different. There's something about queen b6. This is an attempt to refute the position Every one of these positions is slightly different. Queen b6, knight f5, queen takes b2, and knight a4. Does that make sense? Lugradi Vilmos, Hungarian. Yeah, black is lost here. But knight a4 is a good move. So, he's an arbiter, actually, now. All right. So, queen b6 is too early. It doesn't work. If d6 transposes to a normal dragon, that's that's considered inaccurate. So, black black's supposed to play castles here. He does. And then white plays bishop c4. Yeah, so this, this is a common, common situation. Wow, it's interesting. It looks like G4 has been played in some games. But um, <clears throat> Bishop C4 is clearly the most logical. Now, herein lies the trap with Queen B6. There is a problem, though with this. It's like a forced draw. 
I don't know if you can win if you play queen b6. I've been thinking about this. You know, it might be better to go for a different line for black. So he plays it, and then Repun plays bishop b3. I mean, it's hard to believe Repun knows this. He just happened to know this. It's a little weird. He didn't even know the, the opening theory, but... So now knight takes e4 is the main line, and it, it leads effectively to a very drawish position after knight to d5. Um, I thought about this quite a bit. Amazingly, some people have lost this position with white. But it's really hard to lose. Check. C3. Knight C5. Knight takes C6. Either recapture. Knight takes check. King H8. And I think it's just very drawish after knight takes C8. It looks like there's a few isolated examples of, of white losing, but I played with black and it's very frustrating. It's basically a draw. So game over bra decides to play knight g4 instead, but I thought that this was a mistake. This has been played by some other players. I'm not sure this is objectively a good idea. I was pretty sure the computer said that weight is better after this move. F takes g4. And now knight takes d4 allows knight to d5. Is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Queen a5 check. C3. I'm a little confused by this position. Bishop d2, queen d8. <coughs> Here. Here. The situation is extremely dangerous for black. Looks like he's just about okay. I don't know if this analysis holds up. Let's see. It does. It does. Knight takes d4 has never been played. But white is better off castling, apparently. And then black has to make like a very awkward move here, queen d6. So bishop takes a safer. We see like the evaluation here. I would never play this variation because I mean I with black because I looked at I've looked at the analysis and I'm, I don't really want to play where it says that white is better. I mean, so he's basically accepting a slightly worse position to play for a win. Bishop takes d4, and now Bishop takes d4 was played for the most part. Queen d4, queen d4. We go into an ending where. White structure <coughs> is is worse. Black is about equal, maybe. So it's an interesting decision. I think he knows, and he's he's avoiding you know the other line because it's drawish. Maybe not. So bishop h six. There's a game here with the Soviet or Russian Grandmaster Kochev. Rook e8 is best. No, bishop g7. Yeah, because, I mean, you're weakening f7 with rook e8. So apparently he's in big trouble. If castles, I guess, Repun thought that, I mean, you can't castle, but let's say rook f1. White probably thought, you know, e6 is okay. It's not that easy to attack f7. But there are some scary ideas, you know, involving knight d5, queen f3, castle's queen side.
instead knight d5. So f7 is very weak, but we're not exploiting f7 with the knight on d5. Here, that makes some sense, I guess. Queen c5 is okay. c3. And now he refuses to go back. Is it too late? Actually, I mean, bishop e5 deserves consideration. If bishop e3, you have like queen d6, or even queen a5 for that matter. This move looks clumsy to me. You know, maybe, maybe black, let's see what the computer says. It likes bishop f2, wow. So why is bishop e5 so bad? Apparently just the danger of f7 is so serious that black's in big trouble. Wow. I was assuming that the e6 would hold it, but you're going to get crushed by this. There's just no way to defend f7. Knight d8 isn't going to work. Knight f6 check. So there's knight f6 check. There's mate. <coughs> he can't hold it. Okay, so check here. I mean, again, here I would, I would think king e2 would be a better move. But I guess he was afraid of, like, bishop... Bishop takes g4, check. It is a three minute game. Knight a5, we don't want to overanalyze it. Yeah, black's development is really non existent. I would think queen f3. But he went here. This doesn't look this doesn't look as impressive. Man, I mean Queen F3 is brutal. You're actually threatening knight f6 check there, aren't you? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, I mean, Black's bishop is ridiculous on h4. So he went here. Kind of a creative idea, though. And White took it. And now they're... Yeah, their king side is a little bit safer, almost, with that pawn on f6. Now, this, this was a good idea, though. He's got serious play against the e4 pawn. Princess Chess, welcome. Um, good to see you. How are things? Yeah, I don't know if Reapon should have even played this in retrospect. You know, should White should White have even gone for? Because I, I felt like the bishop was misplaced on f two. I mean, first of all, White White missed Queen f three. I mean, Queen f three. Dude, this has to be like, this has to be game over, no? <laughs> it's not game over, bro. It's game over, no? Queen f3 is extremely strong. Wow, he also had g3. g3 just like trapping that bishop. So he was totally winning. Well, game over, bro is the right name. Um, all right. Here, here. That was a nice defense, though, to find that. And now we get into an ops color bishop position in, in super fast time mode. D5 kind of seems like a weird move in a way. Because I was hoping we could get... I was sort of hoping we could get the bishop on that diagonal. I mean, if you play B6 here, you're actually threatening rook takes E4, right? But white might have a faster. I mean, white has very quick, quick threats of you know taking on f six and mating. Um, Princess Chess doesn't say hi to me. Just, just asturbate and Mister Coffee. But I, th I think it's implied. All right, d five, queen f three. Yep, takes. Both kings are wide open here. Now it's just a bullet game, but I kind of like think white's king is less safe than black's king. Of course, white is up material, and now this pawn, this pawn duo looks very strong. Coming down the board, it's just a bullet game now, so the quality is very low. 
I mean, white doesn't guard his pawn on d5. He's got to be winning, I mean, after c4. Ripon sort of starts to play too fast when his opponent's in time pressure. That's a huge blunder. And now he missed bishop h3 check, queen f3 check, and we go into an ending. And the bra is... Bra is holding. Yeah, objectively, I think white has better here. Um, this is very interesting, rook e5. But I don't want to overanalyze it again. It's just a bullet game. So he, he got the he got the initiative back, gave it back. White's like playing for a draw now. You know, he was better and he starts to screw it up. And this is a dead draw. I mean, I'm just going to stop here. There is one way. There is one way that actually white could lose. If the black king were able to get in here. <clears throat> over there, but... That... I don't know, actually. I mean... Can we stop this from happening? Black has this invasion down here. And he also has a majority on the other side. So it's a little bit tricky for white. He doesn't seem to make up his mind here. He fixes the pawns. And that that actually is a crazy move. H5 is just insane. Move 11. They cost double. Yeah. Yeah, but in bullet, he's 2200. Well, you can explain to me how how the fact is the guy's 2200 in bullet and 1800 in blitz. Because he plays super fast. He's only, he only plays fast. Um... Yeah, he's done this to me a lot. But I think this is just ridiculous. Now, White's just like trying to like make him lose on time. It's not an increment. And he's just like lost now. And Black just like blundered. A3 doesn't work. I guess it's a tough one. Which way should we take? It's funny, like, this could be a draw. Even after this insane b3? No. He's lost. Yeah, okay, this is better, probably. The further outside pawn. Yeah, anyway, the rest is a joke. It ends in a draw. Somehow. Um, Alright, I'm not going to continue with that. Morales is up. I really don't prefer people to submit, like, bullet and three-minute games. That was just ridiculous at the end. Move 11. You know, $100 donation. I'll think about it. <laughs> just kidding. Move 11 is, is a founder of the stream. VIP and founder. 55-month subscriber. For you, we will put your game in. But that'll absolutely be the last one. I have long COVID. Feeling good. I've got a glass of wine. Fifty my fifty-five months senior. All right. No game nine sixty. Chess 960, whatever. That game was a draw. Don't ask me. It was ridiculous. So we got another 3-0 game. Are you guys serious? Even Morales is submitting the 3-0 games. Morales VIP. E4, C5, Knight C3, E6. Knight F3. Yeah, I mean, there's no really good answer against this E6. Against A6... Miralis has played some G3 type of stuff against me. But against E6, you can play G3. But I, I like Morales's I like Morales's um Morales's 
I should say Morales's. Morales's. His repertoire where he, he transfers back to um, the open Sicilian in certain variations here. Another interesting move is knight e2. You can do like a hybrid. We usually have good gains in the weekly rapid tournaments, so it would be cool to see some of those once in a while. Yeah, I mean, that's much better than a 3-0. You know, even 5 plus 3 is much better than a 3-0 game. But I think that Repoin was excited because he, he drew with a, a national master. Understandable. Um, the result is more important than the quality of the game. Uh, no, seriously, knight f3 and then a6. And then we, we transpose to open Sicilian, but no, g3. The only thing is that Morales' knight is on f3, so it's it's kind of in a bad position for a closed Sicilian, theoretically. So what should black what should black do now? You know, I was just thinking, how how bad is it to do like d5 anyway? I mean, his plan was to play e6 and d5. Not a lot of games here, but d5? Is this stupid? Is this really bad? How does white respond to that? <clears throat> like, take, take, and d4? I mean, you could do a lot of things. You could play, you could play it like a king's Indian. Okay, so the engine really, really doesn't like this. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, d4. It hates white's, I mean, it hates black's position. Plus 0.9? Ouch. I mean, it's kind of similar to a Tarash. Obviously, Marshall, French. Excel poker, you wait with the opening, the center with e5. Well, I mean, that's the impression we got, right? But I will say this, like, if it's a straight up, I think, honestly, if you get the straight up, the straight up variation with g3, I think d5 is good. So there's, like, a very important distinction to make here. This is, like, seriously a good variation at least very reasonable for black. So it seems like an important distinction to make. It's important that this was included, this was included, and then this was included, and now d5 is not so great. In the open position, I guess the knight on f3 ends up playing a rather, you know, valuable role. But I don't like what black did here. I don't like d6. This is this isn't that great, but I don't know what else to recommend. I guess b five. I don't really like these lines though. You know the a six b five. It's like you're playing the hedgehog against the closed Sicilian, and ultimately white has f four f five and black has no plan. I mean that's the impression that I get every time. White has a strategic plan and black has none. You know he's just like playing the hedgehog. But you can't play the hedgehog if white doesn't play d4. I just don't really like this line. I mean, the computer says white has a tiny advantage. It wants to play d4. But I wouldn't play d4 here. I would just play bishop g2, bishop b7, like d3. And I think that white is, white is comfortable. Not according to the opening explorer. It likes this kind of thing. I mean, maybe this sign on f3 is not that great. If you put the knight on h3 instead, black's in big trouble. You know, this knight is slowing him down in this type of closed Sicilian. If that knight were on h3, it's like f4, f5, black has serious problems. But this seems to make a very serious difference. Um, anyway, Morales doesn't go for a closed setup. 
after Knight of 60 transposes to what should be a Nidorf. A mainline, like, Fianchetto, Skaveningen, slash Skaveningen, Nidorf. Funny to see Morales play this. Now there's like, bleep, like a million games. E6 based um, setup against G3 in the Nidorf. Very tricky for black to play these lines. Yeah, I mean, maybe knight f3 is an inaccuracy. So, I, I kind of like bishop d7, knight c6. You always have to guard against threats like that, but it's not, it's not on here. I like to play this encounter, that bishop on g2 with black. Instead, black plays bishop b7 castle and now queen c7 which is apparently apparently a variation um this could transpose to a game i had once black plays knight c6 next yeah rookie one here um i think rookie one here is a game i've had on the stream quite a few times rookie one knight c6 takes takes and e5 I managed to draw this with black. I think the computer says it's only a very slightly better for white. It's kind of a known, well-known variation. Don't don't mention the dentist or drive. I haven't been to the dentist in a while since I lost my home, my former home. I've never been to a Hungarian dentist. I discriminate. I'm afraid to go to a Hungarian dentist. All right, queen c7, and, and Morales did play rook e1. And now black, I think the safer move, it seems to me I saw Defermian play this. This is probably best, you know, avoiding like these e5 tricks. But you also have to watch out for stuff like knight to d5. I mean, it's probably not working here, but I'm just saying. The idea of sacrificing a piece is, it is like, you know, conceivable and so this, this is not, 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 not dangerous, but just keep your eyes open for that type of piece sacrifice obviously could happen in certain conditions. Um, Ukrainian dead to stories. Yeah. Well, this is a bad time to be going to a Ukrainian dentist. I'm pretty nervous about it. I mean, we're going to have a pretty ugly situation here if if there's a war in in like Ukraine. I mean, I'm on the we're on the border and and our government is like aligned with Putin. So, I don't know what happens. What happens when Hungary is like friends with Putin but they're part of NATO, you know? Like where where do we be where do we stand there? I hope we're standing with NATO. Orban is like Putin's like one of Putin's biggest buddies. And, and we're going to be like between like Europe and, and Ukraine, not looking for a Ukrainian dentist. Um, yeah. All right. So anyways, knight D seven. Knight D seven. Keep in mind, this is a fast game. It's funny, the first thing I think of is f4. But it seems weird, yeah. It's like weird to play that since we just put our rook on e1. So I guess, no, I guess you have to go to some kind of g4, g5 strategy. Someone actually played queen d2 here. a4 is, is easy, easy. Here, okay. And now... Black played rook b8. Now a5. a5 is possible. g4 is possible. Morales, of course, loves to control the e5 square. What would Michael Adams do? 
Now castles, a wise move. Now what does white do? Muralis. I'd like to see Muralis play a match against Dr. Trifchance in the Nidorf. All right, what are we gonna do? So he plays Bishop E3. So there's what happened to our Pawn Storm? Muralis doesn't seem like he's big on the Pawn Storm, but I think this this is probably the moment of truth. He, he may have been waiting, but I mean, G4 deserves serious consideration. I mean, where does Black like put his knights? He can't do like that. You know, he's going to lose a piece. I mean, G5, Knight, D7. You're going to lose a piece. You're going to run out of places to put your knights in this position. So, H6. <clears throat> G4, H6. Oh, is that a Boris Spassky joke? Move 11, thanks for submitting the game. Yeah, when I think of Boris Spassky, that's what I think about. <coughs> thanks for that image. Excel poker. All right. Oh no, move 11, you're gonna make it like unaccessible study, right? No, we can grab it. All right, last game for today. I mean, the move 11 will be the last game for today. Yeah, he had a universal style. What happened to the dentist? Guys, please support the stream. I'm not seeing any big bit donations lately. I guess everybody's disappointed. Don't love me anymore. Maybe self-pity will bring in the bit donations. Bit donations, subscribing. Please subscribe, guys. Anyway, let me get back here. We, we left the game. How did I do that? This is an interesting battle. Anyway, so my point was, I think G4 is a very important concept. Here's the moment to go for. Yeah, I mean, I'm voting for G4 here. His only like sharp response would be d5, but that doesn't even come close to working. Clearly because of the d file, I mean the e file. h6 is bad now. This looks real, real scary for black. Pewter doesn't panic. Wow. The pewter doesn't panic. I mean, to be honest, the only thing about white's position that doesn't really gel is that rook on e1. Normally, when we do a pawn storm on the king side, the rook stays on f1, and we'd be playing like f4, g5, h4, blah, blah, blah. And you also have the rook, rook f3, rook h3 type of rook lift. So it's amazing that black's okay after h6. But that's the only move that's okay. And it's real touch and go. Muralis goes for this. And obviously there's knight c4. Preemptive retreat, like a pro. Like a pro. Are we threatening e5? Not really. Um... Yeah, Michael Adams couldn't have played any better. Now, what well, Black has no threats? No, he does. He's threatening B2. So I would think, like, Rook A2 now. That's kind of awkward. And Antonio played B3. But I guess he's just going to go Bishop B2. Yeah, I mean, this diagonal is not bad. He plays that though, trading pieces. I'm not a big fan of trading pieces here with white. You get the impression that Morales didn't want to take his bishop off this diagonal. But even so, I mean, I think you have reasonable moves. It's 
kind of tricky though. I mean, this gets in the way of the 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 file here. I would play Bishop B two. Oh, he has Knight C four again. Damn. Uh, that's such a annoying move. Damn. Thanks, Excel Poker, for pointing that out. So here, Black doesn't trade. He just simply plays this. Okay. Nice tension. And now Bishop B two. So Morales must have seen that. So white has a better structure, but it's, you know, still a very tense game. And black played d5. Wow. Logical, but maybe black should prepare it better. I mean, he can bring his rooks. Maybe he can bring his rooks more to the center. I just can't believe that black is that bad off here that he loses in a few moves. Um, it just looks like white is only slightly better. This shouldn't be over in like five moves. So he plays d5, a reasonable try. Expecting white to push, probably. But I guess here black has a reasonable French. Knight e4. If f3, you could just go to c5. I'm not in love with it for black. I think white is better here, but it's not so easy. Very closed. Yeah, he has this take. That's what happened in the game. Can you guys see the notation? Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened in the game. take. He underestimated this. And knight f5. But you gotta take it. He's gotta take this. I mean, this 100% has to take it. And now queen takes d5. Bishop's hanging, f5's hanging. But black can play, like, bishop, bishop c5, maybe. Even bishop f6. Black is, is alive. It's alive. He's alive. This was the game, right? Take, take, bishop f6, yeah. This is, this is not a good move. <sighs> so Morales just killed him. That's the way I lost to the weakest player I ever lost to in my days at the chess club in Boston. We used to have blitz tournaments every week, and the winners were normally 2,400 players. There were maybe 15 players, and there were always like players of every level down to like 1,200 in the tournament. We'd have like a big round robin, maybe 15 players. You would play all kinds of opponents between like 1,200 and 2,400. And one time, this guy who was like 1,600, that's the only the only game I ever lost to someone who was like under 1,800, under 1,700 at the time, I think. I allowed that mate with knight h6. <laughs> it's a stupid position. Not this obvious, but yeah. This, this is... He got me with that. There's a name for that mate, I think. Khan and Renaud have this book called The Art of the Checkmate, and they catalog a lot of different kind of mating patterns. This is one of them. This this has a name, I think. All right, Morales got a little bit lucky there, but don't we all? Next game is Yabatis versus Butch, Butch Cassidy. Not our normal Yabatis, Ayobates. Am I lagging? No. Bowden? Is it the Bowden's Gambit? Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. That was a good book for teaching kids like general mating patterns before the days of <clears throat> before the days of the internet. 
Um, maybe the boat Bowden's get um, mate. The Biden mate. Just a small incursion. All right. It was it's an easy era to be president of the United States, dude. This is the easiest time ever. Easiest job in the world. You can you can easily make everybody happy. <laughs> it's like forget about it, man. Um All right, Ibotis is Ibotis is white. White? No, this is the wrong game. Butch versus Ibotis. Here it is. Oh, don't start in politics. Bowden and Biden. Or is it the Godin Gambit? All right. We will find out. Butch 48, E4, Knight C6, D4, E5, Knight F3, and now... I remember at 500 open games, Bronstein discusses that move. It reminds me of the symmetrical Queen's Gambit. Um, I don't know what the what the final analysis is of that, but I'm just trying to think of like alternatives. Alternatives to. You know what I would say is like the forced move here. Do we have? White is a girly man. What does that mean? White played the Scotch. It's kind of macho, I think. Slash and burn. But no, black. What's he gonna do? Oh, Butch forty eight. D6. Yeah, D6 is horrible. Yabatis likes it. I don't recommend this. Okay, it's not horrible, but I don't prefer it. Yeah, I think we have to... We, we just have to take. There just isn't another good move here. What was I thinking? There, there's no other... There's just no other good possibility. I, I saw some funny games where people did this. This is not really good. Yep. Yeah, now White has the choice between like the Royal Pass Steinitz. Um, staying in the realm of what would be like the Joko Piano Hungarian Hungarian defense is likely now. Um, or exchanging on E5. I, yeah, I don't really like this move. You know, I, I don't know. I think this is worse than D6, maybe. Which is worse? Playing D6 or exchanging on E5? Yeah. I think the statistics speak for themselves. White's winning percentage drops from, like, 48 to 35. He, he drops from the 40s to the 30s if he plays D takes E5. You're trading off, you're trading off your own central pawn here. Um, so that could take either way. Oh, okay. Also, you bought us, you know, there's this gambit. There's this stupid gambit that Vadim used to play against me in Harvard Square. This like national master. This is really, really stupid for, for black. It's totally unsound. I wouldn't even take the pawn. I would just play this and I got a like crushing end game every time. But bishop g4 is, it's not, this is not okay for black. You can't do that in a serious game. Um, this, this is possible. Um, you know, I think this is a very principled move to play pawn takes pawn, like keeping the strong point on e5. I guess what would happen, like takes, king takes, and bishop e5 now, trying to undermine this pawn. You know, so this raises an interesting question say this position takes takes if you get this position where black has like the bishop pair 
but the static weaknesses. I thought I thought there was a speaking of Uber driver. I thought there was a Fisher game, like Fisher Smyslov or something, where he he beats Smyslov pretty badly with this type of structure. I might be misremembering it though. Hmm. You prefer the bishops? Well, I mean, maybe if it was more dynamic and like there were queens on the board. But I don't know. It's kind of not a lot of not a lot of dynamism. I and mean, we've traded one set of minor pieces on the queen already. I would prefer white. But um Yabatis takes with the pawn. I'm sorry, he takes with the knight on e5. So now it's an interesting position. White doesn't have the obligation to trade there on e5. You can buy now with no obligation. What about just like knight c3 or something? That's funny. Look at the opening explorer. Five games with knight c3. Just imagine knight c3. Like, there's no way in hell that white isn't better in this position. Literally. No way in hell. You know, I mean, you have superior control of d5, superior control of d4, superior control of e4. I mean, three out of four central squares, good mobility. You know, why not just play knight c3? Um, the problem is... They, they they can't resist this sort of like trading queens. Oh, I'm going to trade queens and he can't castle. It's a common misconception that this is good for white. Computer is, is just fine. Let's see if it really holds up, though. Knight c3, see? Knight c3 is gravitating to the top. Yep. There it is. Yep. See? Pulled you. This is an extremely strong move. I would I would also like happily like take with the G pawn. This is juicy position for white. I mean not that there's anything wrong with like queen takes, but No. No, I don't see black I don't see black equalizing here. Only if white does this idiotic move knight takes c five. Logina beat Mastrovich in this ending. He's a great player. Both of them are great players, are great. Luginov is probably still around somewhere, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't understand why a quality Grandmaster would play that move unless he just wants to draw. It's very strange to me. Machea versus Philidor Expert, Mark Ritter, 1-0. Todorovich, Velimirovich, 1-0. Almost everybody trades an e5. Well, anyone under 2,000 is going to do it almost automatically. And this is a really interesting position that Yubatis and I have talked about before. He gets to show off a cool idea now. So... You know, normally in this type of position, you would play like bishop e6 or f6 or king e8. But we had looked at this position or something similar. And there's kind of a neat trick. Which we found using an engine. Um, instead of, I mean, this is playable and, and a safe move, I guess. But white still has a small advantage after bishop e6. Um, a really neat idea here is king e7. This looks crazy, right? But the idea is to play bishop e6 and not not have your pawns get doubled. You can always play c6. And the nicest thing about it is there is this trick. Like, a lot of people get tempted to play b3 and try to play bishop a3 check. But then you just play bishop e6 anyway. When they play bishop a3 check, you play king f6. And now, like, this exchange doesn't do anything for white. And black just ends up with this king on, like, an active square. Um, it's actually better for black, probably, if they fall for that. 
So this guy, he was pretty smart. He didn't play b3. He just castled, which is like the best move. Bishop e6. You know, so I think objectively, like, white might be a tiny bit better. Maybe point 0.1. See what the engine says. It's bigger than that. It's giving white plus point half a pawn. Point 0.5. So bishop b3. Yabata suggested c5, but it looks a little weakening to me. I suggested knight c3, he suggested a6, and we left it at that. Um, but the computer is not buying this. It thinks that white is significantly better. But you don't have to play c5. I think black can play this in a safer way. I'm not sure after plus two. He's like, I'm not sure about c5, maybe. Um, well, your first instinct was to take, you know, but I think that white is slightly better here. But it's not enough to win. I mean, if you defend... If you defend correctly, it should be a draw, probably, um, between two reasonable players. Instead, he plays this, though. He puts his bishop on a bad square to try to take advantage of the fact that black king is, is in the center, you know, which is interesting idea. Now, now Yabatis' next move is natural, but I'm not certain. I think he needs to get developed. I'm not sure what he should do. Maybe c6. If f4. You know, maybe you should have played c6. If f4, you could take and, and just, like, get your knight to a more active square or something. Where it can go here, here. Because what happened in the game, white got something. f6, f4. Now... We're not obligated to take on f4, it's true here. But ultimately your pawn on e5 could, could become a target. The bigger problem is that black doesn't have a place a good place to put his king. Probably e8 is the best option. As white opens the position like Karpov. Karpov Sarawan, very famous game where, where Karpov beats Sarawan. Um an ending type position opening it up. But I think it was like a king on c7 with c6. f4, he takes, now starts to open up. And c6, and this looks dangerous. The e5 looks dangerous. And suddenly black is like far behind in development. Knight c3, and Yabatis here played king e8 to get his bishop out. But he's way, way behind in development. But the interesting thing is like, it's not that easy for white, because if he plays f5, you just close the position with e5, f5. And then the, the e5 pawn becomes a weakness. In the long run, it can become targeted. And Wade has like no way to take advantage of his development lead. Chicken. Eat some chicken. So bishop e3, stopping bishop c5 check, but black now has bishop d6. So slowly, white has no way to open the game. This was a nice move though. Knight e2 with maneuver. Now here. Knight g6 is a reasonable move. Here doesn't I don't get this really. He doesn't have anything there. Knight e5, threatening knight g4. And not so much trying to get this bishop, you know, it's it's like fixing his pawn structure. White should play h3. Instead, he plays knight f4. Black could have taken on a2, but that's naturally, that's naturally kind of scary to take that pawn. We figured out that the bigger threat is knight g4. You're just getting the bishop out of take, and now you're threatening knight g4. And white never has time to trap that bishop, it turns out. But naturally, I would have played bishop f7 to dominate the knight. But Yabata said he didn't think about that. So he went here. And now this stopping knight g4, or discouraging it. Now Yubatis, I think, went off the rails. I think black is, is fine and is very solid here.
But knight h5 seems to be a threat. You know, come to think of it, I mean, you could play knight g4, couldn't you? I mean, still, it's a bishop, and the position started to open up a little bit. Like, knight g4, bishop g4, bishop g4. I think you're just, you're just better. What is he going to do? Maybe h3, then you've got to go back. There's no way that black is worse here. Damn, he's worse. <laughs> Shut up, stockfish. But its, it's advantage is dropping. It's, it's almost non-existent. Man, I can't believe white is better. Wow. Well, the problem is that we can't castle. You know, I wasn't, I keep thinking like, it feels like we can castle. I guess when you factor in the fact that black can't castle, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, if we could castle, we would we would be more than equal here. But the fact that black can't castle, the king is kind of stuck in the center. So that was tough. I don't like what the move you did, though. You did knight g6, allowing knight h5. And this is really awkward. Like, we have no good way to protect the g7 pawn. So he was super lucky this didn't explode in his face. I don't even know what to suggest here. Probably like bishop f8 is the best move. He plays this, rook g8, and white had like bishop c4. I don't know. I don't think there's even a defense to that. Um, maybe you should sack the exchange or something. Seriously. I mean... Like, just losing the exchange. I, I don't know what to suggest. So that was fortunate. He played the wrong bishop. And now you have time to excel poker said take the center, you know, outpost square. Look for the resign button. I agree. I'm always, like, hovering my mouse over it anyway. And now white frustrated by his failure to find the forced win last move decides to go completely berserk and sacrifice a rook you know a knight would be one thing maybe he sacked the wrong piece by accident or something maybe knight takes pawn takes rook takes this is obviously speculative at best you know, maybe, maybe there's almost something here for white. It looks like you could even play king e7. But instead he sacks his rook. And then he's just like down a piece for two pawns. It's like one of Astro Bates games. Where the opponent just commits suicide. But this guy's like 22-29. And now you just try to trade pieces. Yeah, the two pawns is fine, but he's got like kind of weak pawns. You're very well coordinated. His bishop on d3 is bad. His king is unsafe. As we see now, could have sacked here. I, I, I didn't mention this to you earlier. You could have sacked on g5, but I guess there's nothing clear, right? After king h1, check. Yeah, I mean, you probably looked at it and rejected it. There's not enough there. So check here, rook e1, and now you're, you're all over his king. This was nice, so now he gets forked. And this is really fancy, but good. And then there. And then three pieces for one piece. Yeah, that's... That's cooperation. Alright, Sumahara. We need to get to Sumahara's game. Guys, please support the stream. I'd like to thank Jim. Jim should be here. He was on earlier. Maybe he's working. He submitted a game. Jim donated 800 bits. Mr. Coffee, 100 bits. We had gift subs this week from Universitate Cluj and Astrobate. 
Support your starving chess streamer. All right, Sumahara for the win. Yeah, Sumahara, another player who always submits like blitz games. Wait, yeah, here it is. Support your local chess streamer suffering from long COVID. Oh no, you're submitting your game with me? Dude, no. No, 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 no. Sumihara sent in his game with me. Oh god. I hate, I hate like doing my games. Yeah, actually, um, Husky was the one who said, why don't we, you know, analyze more games from like the, the Tuesday tournament? And here we go. So this is from our Tuesday Rapid Tournament. I played the Alinchich variation. We've had like 20 games in the Classical Nimzo. And um, I, I told a story during the tournament. The Zlatko played this against me. Zlatko is like just a random, random Serbian grandmaster who played a lot here in Hungary, but he's one of the only people who has like never lost to me that I've played a lot of games against. He has an interesting style. And he's probably the player who's played me the most games without losing in the world. Um, this is against Sumahar. So Sumahar is 1836. He's kind of stronger than that, though. Anyway, so I, I told the story how I, I played Lynchich two years ago with White in a team tournament in Ketchikamet, and I prepared this variation. It was like literally the first classical Nimzo I've played in like 10 years or something, because I don't keep up on the theory. And I saw he plays this, and I was like, oh man, I gotta play this with White. I mean, this just can't be right for Black. It's not clear what White's best move is here against d6, but against d6, knight f3, I mean, Ilinchich like plays h6. I don't know where he came up with this. It's just like a move that it prevents bishop g5, but it's it's really really random. So, obviously, like more normal moves here for Black are are possible. I mean, castles c5, knight d7, probably knight c6 just transposes to a Swedish variation. Yeah, I mean, basically, when, when I saw this Ilinchich plays this move, I was like, okay, I'm not going to offer a draw, even though he's my friend. Even though he's a grandmaster, this is ridiculous. I'm going to try to beat him with white. And what did I do? I, like, went in there. I had only played one game in, in six months or, or close to a year. And I lost with white in, like, 25 moves. It was horrifying. Yeah, I just, like, got annihilated. I tried to play, like, a maniac, and, and I didn't castle... Um, I put my bishop on f4 like I was playing the London system. It was, it was so bad. Um, how did my bishop go to f4? I still don't even understand. I just don't understand. Man, I'm like spacing out. I didn't play this now, did I? I couldn't have played that move. Unfortunately, my game is not in the database, but... I'm trying to recall what I played. I can't recall what I played. It's so strange. Maybe... What could I have played? It's funny that Atzel played h3. Okay, obviously the refutation of h6 is h3. It's just... I don't remember. Did I do this? Maybe I did h3 and tried to play bishop f4, thinking that I could retreat the bishop back to h2. It was horrible. It was one of the worst games I ever played. And embarrassing, you know, to like, to lose. On a, on a team, in a team game. I think I was bored too, but still. Um... So anyway, I'm playing black for the first time in this position. I've never played this. And now e3. But e3 isn't really dangerous. 
we're just transposing to a kind of classical Nimzo or Rubenstein Nimzo. So Otzel has a game here too. Um, you know, h6 is like a wasted tempo. Schieberspieler, welcome. I'm playing the my game against Sumaher where I, I play the Alinchich system with black. C5. And now Bishop D3 looks good. So we're following a couple of these other games. This other Serbian guy, I guess. I, I guess they're Serbian, I don't know. There's another game for 2015. Wonder if Zako stole that from someone else. So now I was proud though. Like in this position, Zako played castles. Um, is that right? And the other guy played knight c6. But I found the best move in a 15 minute game. Well, it's a simul, but I have basically what feels like 15 minutes per game. I was proud that at least I found the best move here. It looks like this is an improvement on theory, b6. The idea would be to put the bishop on the long diagonal. I'm gonna trade my bishop on c3 and just set up like bishop b7, knight on bd7. I think the computer concurred, but maybe it changed its mind since the last time I looked. Yeah, it's like b6, number one move. Actually by a large margin. B6 is best, well, only by a one, one, cent, one tenth of a cent upon, two tenths of a cent upon. But I mean, still, like, the first time I played this position and I, I played a, a reasonable novelty, I think that's best. Castles now I take, he takes, and then bishop b7. And obviously, like, the important thing is that we keep control of e4. White well, can't possibly play e4, right? I mean, g7's hanging in some lines. And then, then here, white started to play kind of passively. I assume he should play like b3 or b4. Subahar had another game against me where he played similarly. But okay, he was concerned about bishop takes b7. That's like chopping off my right arm. But it's done. You know, I mean, this is a thing. Like, I might play bishop takes f3 if the situation feels right. But I wasn't really planning on it. He obviously is afraid of that because he played knight e1. But I don't know. You know, I mean, is this really... Do I really want to give up my, like, bishop just for that knight on f3? That wasn't the plan, honestly. I feel like white should just play b3 and play it like a bogo, you know, putting his bishop on the long diagonal. You're you're big on bishop hair. No, I mean b3 looks like slightly better for white. H6 didn't do anything for my position. I could play knight e4, but you see, here's where we start to have some problems. Because I'm not castled. So I really have to castle. And then he gets that long diagonal stuff. And it's hard to answer that. <clears throat> but again, like a typical situation in the, in the BOGO. This is passive by white, 91. Now I was happy. And I played it like a kind of typical classical Nimzo where I started to set up pressure on the C4. And I'm happy. I mean, I shut down his bishop on, on B2. I've got pressure against C4. His knight is on a weird square on E1. I actually thought I was better here. An interesting, interesting fact, I mean, I thought I was better because there's the clear plan to attack C4. His minor pieces are not good. His rooks are not connected. I know he has the bishop pair, but seems like black is fine. The engine still thinks that white is better here. 
So he plays f3, stunning my bishop and keeping e4 under control. Rook c8. And now queen d2 getting off the file. And I can't believe it. Like, still white is better, according to the computer. I mean, he's got hanging pawns, and his bishop on b2 is, like, doing nothing. I mean, I still, I just can't believe that white is better here. I mean, maybe, maybe he's not worse, but really better? So apparently this is dubious, although a very natural move. I, he had c5 coming up later. So I don't know what I should do. I kind of ran out, I ran out of ideas here. Probably like rook e8 or something just hanging out. Maybe I could play e5, but that's dangerous business. Let's see what the best move is here. Yeah, rook e8 is up there. Taking right away. Okay. Rook e8 is just a waiting move. But this is concrete. <coughs> if I take, he has to take with the pawn. I've got to watch those hanging pawns. But I guess that was, that was logical. Then I could play bishop a6. Okay, that, that's instructive. You know, I misplayed this. I was scared of the long diagonal. So I didn't want to surrender that exchange on c4, but it's not that easy. f6 is super overprotected. He can't do d5. So I, I should have just exchanged pawns first. This is a mistake. Rook c1, and now I went off the... I, I just, like, totally didn't calculate, and he has c5 coming up. This is a bad move, stopping bishop a3. Because he has c5. When I take, he just like takes with a knight, and now he's protecting c5. And white's got this crushing pass pawn. It was just a failure to calculate. Again, I should just like take on c4, obviously. And I'm fine. Playing against the hanging pawns. So he blunders now as he takes d5. Trade, take. And now knight takes, and... I'm actually better. And here, I don't know. I was in bad situation on the clock. My idea was that if he plays, I would induce f4 and I would put my queen on f5 and start to play for the light squares. Even like h5 maybe. Knight f6. I don't know. But he traded. And I, I knew after that that he was content with the draw. Unfortunately, he just like vacuums the board and I'm not I'm not really much better. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's not enough to win. It's just a draw. And the funny thing was at some point I started to try to set up like a light square bind. I think at this point here I offered a draw it was right around here where I actually offered a draw the computer says I'm better and I was just setting up a fortress and he declined my draw wait coming up here bishop d2 a6 h3 takes takes and I was like okay it's a fortress I offer a draw and I'm I have like no losing chances in this position I mean there's no way that his king is getting in and he had way more time so he declined the draw I was kind of irritated. But after this, I actually missed. It looks like I might even be better here. So I have king g6 with the idea of king h5. I actually am better after he declined the draw. But I was content with the draw with like very little time left in the simul. So that was an interesting game. Well played by both sides. Um, 20 CPL for Sumaher, 18 for me. That's quite good for, for a simul game. Oh no, I just closed the window. Oh no, our window. Sheber Spiller, how's it going? My studies. Welcome everybody to the stream. 
International Master William Pascal going over subscriber games. Please support my efforts here, guys. Somebody needs to subscribe. We've got a whole bunch of games left. Asturbate, Uber Driver, Jim, Excel Poker, and Move 11. Let's go. Chess exam. Now nah, you wish it was a chess exam. Good luck. All right, we've got Asturbate with black. Wow, Asturbate facing see. I said this to Asturbate today. The interesting thing is that his rating. By the way, everybody, not to embarrass him, but Asturbate's been watching my stream for like I don't know three and a half years, however long it's been, and he's one of the first and most devoted followers of the stream. He started out like 1400 and now he's he's finally crossed 1800. No, he made it over 1800, Shiver Spieler. He fell back. He went over 1800, and that's what I wanted to say. And he went over 1800 in classical once or twice and he's fallen back. But he'll he'll get it and maintain it soon. But what I want to say was like now what's interesting is that if you look at his games, he's starting to play better players. And the interesting thing is, like, for the first time, he's starting to get people playing, like, real openings. He had a guy who played G3 against him in one game. He had uh, Mainline King's Gambit. He had... Now he's got the C3 Sicilian. So he's starting to get not just beginner players, but players who are, like, intermediate playing, like, tournament-style openings for the first time. I mean, when did we see someone play the C3 Sicilian against Astrobate? Never. You know, everyone plays like Bishop C4 or something stupid. So C3, D5 takes, Queen takes D5, and now Knight F3. And, um, okay, there's a million possibilities. The main moves are like Knight F6, Knight C6, and E6 probably. But there's a wide variety of choices here. I've been playing Bishop F5, but it's kind of like a experimental. <coughs> this is a very experimental move. Um, Astrobate instead plays Bishop G4. That's riskier than than like one of the more conservative moves, like Bishop. Um, I'm sorry, E6, Knight C6, or Knight F6. Yeah, it's experimental, but it makes sense to 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 pin here. You just have to be careful all your kingside pieces are at home and your king is still in the center. And the same goes for bishop f5. When you play these queenside pieces, we're not necessarily planning on castling queenside. I talked to move 11 about the concept of balance development, which is something that's really not existent in chess theory. The idea that you need to balance the development of the kingside and the queenside. So we have no kingside pieces out at all. It would make more sense for. I mean, this is the default move, I think. You know, this is. If if I'm a an intermediate player and I want to follow principles, knight f6 developing a kingside piece, that's got to be the right move. Yeah, and also knights before bishops, absolutely. Now you can't go wrong with knight f6. Like that's got to be the primary move for black, absolutely. Use principles to guide you if you don't know the theory. Bishop g4, bishop before knight. That doesn't seem right. Hey, we have a new saying. Bishop before knight. That doesn't seem right. All right, knights knight before bishop. We need we need an expression. Knight before bishop. What is it? Beer before liquor. Anyway, we're gonna get Shiver Spieler confused. Bishop e two, knight c six. It's also important. Yeah, but remember the queen a four fork. It's always convenient when it's a bishop. You know, it's not a knight, fortunately. You know, um, the bishop can come back. We have multiple ways of defending that. This isn't great, but even this could be like defended, right? Um, bishop not as bad as a loose knight on, on g4. So bishop g4. Yeah, it's funny. Schieberspieler mentions that. Several people have played this move, but I... I I don't know that queen a4 is a big deal. I don't think that white gains anything from this, really. 
Yeah, I mean, bishop d7. Why should this be great for white? Black does need to find a move here. Maybe e6. Knight f6. Knight f6. There you go again. Knight f6. Chew. Ch I want to say check. It's check. It's queen check. That's a check. King f1. And then e6. d3. Queen c6. Knight e5. Queen c7. This is sort of coffee house. Bishop d6. Takes. This might have been played in Hungary. This guy played in for Saturday, <clears throat> from what I recall. Anyway, that's just an example. All right, bishop e2. Now, you've got to watch for e5. This pawn can become a target on the open file, and again, your king and your pieces are not out. But e5 would be the most aggressive way to play. Kamelnitsky-Dlugi, 1992 h3 now we don't want to exchange our bishop for no reason so the choice from my perspective i mean you can look at it but i don't see this particularly inviting take take check and i mean even king f1 is better for white probably yeah e6 too quickly <laughs> rest in peace bishop that's a good point cheaper spieler so like bishop g4, if white makes a quiet move here, bishop e2, yeah, if he plays e6, rest in peace, bishop. That's been done in the Karo Khan before. Now we have a serious problem. Yeah, very, very true. So always play e5. Castle, yeah, Acerbate just goes down the, the insane path here. Excel poker, knight c6, and go. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to play knight f6 or e6 now. The interesting thing about e6 is that you might have some cases where the knight goes to e7. I mean, e5 is possible too, but you have to watch this. This open line. e5 is like riskier. So, I don't know. I would just play knight f6 probably. Or e6 like Brisgallin played. So, Astrobate castles queenside. But the king is not really safe here. I mean, you've pushed up your c pawn. And that's creating a lot of open space in front of the black king. You're going to have to be very, very careful about your king position. Knight a3, knight f6, knight c2, the, quite a passive move there with knight c2. That's not, not the scariest move I could play. And then e5. Yeah, I'm, I'm skeptical of, of knight c2. But I don't really know what, what he should play here. Open it up when in doubt. D4. Wow. B4. D4, CD4. Wow, knight takes D4. Bishop takes E2. Queen E2. It's like a Scandinavian. Knight takes d4, c takes d4. How's your king doing? It's kind of drafty around here. See, this is the problem. You know, if you thought you're winning a pawn, this is the danger with castling queenside in the, in the c3 Sicilian. Yeah. You got to be very, very careful not to let it open up. So that's why you probably shouldn't castle queenside. But this is good. You're discouraging d4. <clears throat> Does he have knight e5? Knight e5. Bishop e2. 
knight d7, bishop d1, knight f6, <coughs> knight f8, I don't know. I would consider even this, 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 and like here type of position where you'd be down a pawn, but way would be totally like tied up. He'd have no way of getting his pieces out because of the bind on the d3 square. You might be able to sacrifice a pawn in such a way. Play like Shaq and play g5. Yeah, just find a place to play g5. I think that's, yeah, that's good advice. Uh-oh, bishop b5. How does that work? So ask me, what's up with, with e4 here? White has this. We take his queen. He takes our queen. Wow. But still black is okay. I mean, knight takes. Like, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, knight e5. Again, you have very, very good like control of the, the weakness in the center. Um... So you could have played e4 and you didn't do it. You did bishop d6. And again, he has e4. And doesn't pull the trigger on that. I mean, I need a really good reason not to play that move. <clears throat> Can you give me a good reason not to play this move? I think this is... White is... Big trouble. So we have this again, 95. Yeah, that's the question. It looks like it fails, though. I mean, for example, take. <coughs> you could almost sack your queen in this position. It's like perverse well, what would be happening here all right it's too much i couldn't resist like at least looking at this it's just not enough all right knight takes e5 queen somewhere yeah i mean now it looks like we're just Really huge advantage. White King is not safe. Plus eight. Asked me too hesitant to play e4 there. Interesting, a pawn move. Knight d6, rook d6, bishop e2. White's like, oh, whew, I didn't allow e4. <laughs> and now he does turn into Mamajarov. With the nice job with the g5. White plays g4, takes, 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 check, and white king is not safe. Wow, rook h6 is nasty. Damn, dude. Yeah, he's not materialistic. Now knight h2? Unfortunately, just drops e2, right? Well, you have even better. After knight h2, you don't go here and just win a piece. You play queen h3. <sighs> Threatening bishop f3 check. That's just brutal. So he plays this check here. Bishop f3 check. Bishop f3 and queen h2 mate. Uh. Yeah, that was epic. That's probably my favorite game for today. Honestly, you know... Only marred by the fact that he could have simply played e4 with a winning position. He did it his way. <clears throat> All right. This is next game, Uber Driver. Oh, uh, Uber Driver. Uber Driver playing black. Uber Driver, thanks for submitting. And now we have G3. Oh, Uber Driver made some comment about this. Fred Reinfeld said, 
um, E6, or no, what was it? Stockfish says that E6 is, like, dubious. Yeah, but, I mean, G3 is just lame. White, white must play D4. Yes. D4, you know, C3, or Knight C3. Those are the best three moves. So G3 is pretty lame, playing the King's Indian attack. Not a critical test. Crow Chess Fan, thanks for joining us. D5. Yeah, I mean, someone mentioned earlier, um, Excel Poker was saying earlier that in a closed Sicilian, he didn't like D5 too early. But nevertheless, I think this remains like a very principled move. I wouldn't necessarily choose d5, but I think as a French player, it's normal. Maybe you want to wait for white to play d3 here. So it's interesting when you look at the opening explorer. Knight c6 is the main move, bishop g2. And like once I lost to Feugel, where he did, he did Divaraski. Um, Secrets of Opening Preparation was one of Dvoratsky's first successful books. He analyzes this line in there. G6, D4, I think. This this I lost against Igor Feugel with black. It's actually playable for black, but it's not easy and you have to be very accurate. And I was facing a strong player who's like an expert in the King's Indian attack. Um, I'd like to see Uber Driver face Feugel. Did you ever face Feugel in his prime? Maybe you did. Actually. He probably did. It, it wasn't pretty. Alright. D5. E takes D5. Okay, E takes D5 is not... It's not a mainline King's Indian attack. I mean, D3 is... It's pretty lame, honestly. But it's playable. Again, I don't over overstate how good these endgames are. Kamsky or someone recently had a game where they won this kind of endgame with white against somebody. It's kind of like that other game we had with Yabatis. I think the queen exchange is kind of overrated. Um, I don't know what would have happened. Would Uber Driver go for that exchange or not? Astro Bay, thanks for gifting that sub to Crow Chess Fan. Lady in Black, welcome. Good evening. Good evening from Hungary. Your neighbor to the south. Well, not direct neighbor, but I'm, we're down here somewhere. Welcome from Germany. Oh no. Move 11. Really? The late submission and then exchanging submissions? Do you think this is like a department store? He's exchanging. Exchanging his game submission. Only the founder could could dream of such a thing. Alright, anyway. D5, E takes D5. Yeah, I mean, we're going to transpose to... What is this, actually? I don't know what you call it. I mean, is it... Is it a Sicilian? Is it a French? Is it... Actually, I don't even know what to call it. Sicilian defense French variation. Well, that that sort of simplifies it. So bishop g2. I saw a Magnus game in there. And I do remember Magnus playing something like this. d4. Oh my god. Horrifying. And principled. Um, bringing back bad mem memories of another position I lost once. Wow, Uber Driver played d4. Yeah, man. I'd like to see you play that against, like, Andras Adorian or something. Adorian would just go castles in b4. I mean, d4, it's really... You're asking for it. I would castle, and then... As soon as possible, we're going to play as, as in hyper-modern fashion as possible to destroy your, your overextended center. Um, masturbate with the what is that classic rock no 
I can't believe Uber Driver played this move. This looks wrong. So principle says, develop the kingside pieces. Knight f6. Knight f6, castle, bishop e7, get out of there. Get out of there fast. Would be recommended. So d4, I don't like it. But d3 is, is, is a terrible move by white. I mean, it's not terrible, but it just doesn't make sense. You have flexibility. You might play c3, you might play b4, you, you know. You don't need to play d3. So white should castle and then evaluate. I want to play as dynamically as possible. You know, if we if we play like a Dorian with black, for example, he's going to hit you with b5. I mean, if you had this reverse color type of position, because Dorian always loved to be black. Man, I don't know, b4 looks really dangerous, undermining black's center. So let's just say knight f6. Now, what's the best move for white? Can I... Can I crack him with this insanely strong wing gambit here? Computer just wants to play rookie one check. B4 is overrated. After I force it to play B4 now, it starts to like it. Yeah, computer coming up to point four with best play for black. C takes B4 is actually going to point eight now. This seems way more dynamic than other moves. I mean, rookie one just looks like really routine. Of course, you could play it on the next move. You could always do like b4 here. But, you know, you can also do like c3. I mean, obviously this, this is, this is a question about whether that would be a viable option for black. I, I mean, I kind of doubt it, but you have to make sure. So anyway, this is really kind of routine play by white. d3. Castle, 97, you know. So now, now black's kind of okay. Knight on BD2. This or this. Castle, knight c4, bishop c7, preserving your bishop. Knight on c4. B5, we've got a4, okay. Rook e1, knight c6, a4, preventing b5. Now black plays bishop g4. Bafinic on on space advantage, right? Move 11. Now things have changed and like Uber driver's grab with the D4 starts to look like it's, it's, it's profitable. Black's whole position seems to be like he's, he's better based on space advantage. Maybe white should go G4, but it's just this diagonal looks scary. If you do H3, Bishop H5, G4, that, that will be a factor. You know, later on, I mean, my knight can go in here. I'm not sure white wants to weaken his king side to chase that bishop down. And he doesn't have any squares for his queen. Notice the lack of space. Speaking of Magnus, I have seen Magnus maneuver like this. You know, queen f1. To put the queen on f1. Not just Magnus, I mean many Kings Indian players might not be such a stupid idea but probably h3 this move not sure what that does I mean we could even play just h6 here I'm kind of inclined to play h6 like Bishop h4 g5 um, not to be Ben Feingold but I mean, f6 weakens my king side a little bit more than h6 does. I mean, I think this diagonal might be relevant. But I think that maybe the other thing is that we might be able to play more aggressively with our with our f pawn. If we play h6, he goes back here, and we start playing f5, for example. We can play f5, f4. It might be better than h6. I mean, better than f6 to do this. f6 is solid. It's fine.
now you don't have um because the night you don't have this like natural fluid retreat this is a very awkward square uh, so if white did play g4 we would have to come back to d7 but it looks like the grob so that's not a good idea white plays a5 white ran out of ideas no place for the queen but I think queen e2 Queen e2, and if you get hit by rook e8, we go back to f1. And we try to get out of the way. Actually, it's too late, though. Yeah, queen e2, queen d7, queen f1, guarding h3. What's the evaluation? Black slightly better. Black's better because of the space, and it's real now. Instead, white played a5. Doesn't really do much. Now, I would, yeah, whatever, rook b8. This rook isn't doing much here, but I don't like my rook on the long diagonal. So I was going to go rook b8 and try to play for b5. Uber driver played this. This is a blitz game. b3, also not necessary. White doesn't seem to have a plan. Now Uber driver just vacuums the board. Okay, not the most aggressive. Really, Uber Driver, you need to be able to play G5. You know, G5, H5, H4. Your your knight is in the way of your pawn structure. If you were able to play G5, as crazy as that sounds, I mean, Korchnoi would advocate for G5. Okay, rook takes C1, queen takes C1, rook E8, queen C1, and now B6. Eh. I mean, honestly, like, if you move the B-pawn, why not play B5? You might as well play B5 and hope he, like, puts his knight on B2 or something. Why Why play B6? Why not just go here? <clears throat> knight A3, A6, and you're better. He's got to take anyway, but there's a chance that white won't, you know, and, and mess up his position even worse. Um, Now, like, okay, of course he's going to take... Knight g1, and this is a bad sign. White's running out of space. And this is classic. So the space advantage really very serious here. Bishop h3. Plausible. Now we're really in Botvinnik territory. Oh, this is just a blunder. So he just hung a pawn. Yeah. What? He takes on g6. Well, that might be even worse. Yeah, yeah, he's going to lose the h-pawn. Oh, the h-pawn was hanging. Thanks, Pro Chess Fan. I didn't realize it was hanging to that tactic on the diagonal. It hadn't even occurred to me. So that really makes h4 look insane. Oh, okay. Yeah, he could have just taken it. Yeah, I mean, h4 is a catastrophic blunder. I mean, obviously there are, there are stupid lines like this. You could do that. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, still, no. the white king is mated, almost. This would be really bad. White's king is, is finished in this position. Yeah, that's, that's a horrible blunder. Uber driver doesn't do tactics. Bishop d5, h5, bishop g2. Obviously, if you take, now he would have seen queen check and take. That's easy enough. <clears throat> but white loses the bishop. This is fatal. <clears throat> and then king h7 is enough, but he gets fancy. Nice move, king f7, coming to the h file. And mate. How do we finish him off? Bishop f4, queen g4. Yeah. Threatening pretty much total devastation. Where's the denouement? Well, we're going to take with check. That's kind of over. I don't see white lasting very long here. And white hung a piece. Anyway, there's nothing he could do. Yeah, I mean, it was... It was it was a good position at the at the second half of the game, but I don't 
think d4 was a good plan. Objectively, white, white should have been able to take advantage of that. Jim is up next. Um, nice. Thank you for the sub subscription, Acerbate. Um, for Crow Chess Fan. Thanks for pointing out that hanging pawn. That, that was very relevant. I appreciate it when people are actually paying attention during class and raise their hand and say, Hey, his pawn is hanging. Fossi Caballero against Jim. Jim, nice enough to play a blitz game for us. Five five zero. Yeah, normally Jim's playing a lot of B3, but it's nice to see him play classical opening. E4, E5, and then the center attack, which I've been throwing out there. It's fun. It opens a game. Um, but Jim doesn't play it like a normal center attack. You can obviously play the Danish. The Danish isn't bad, you know. I think the Danish is objectively probably better than, say, the King's Gambit. You know, um, this opening is is decent, really better than its reputation. But um, I like the center attack. There's some interesting lines here. I was I was looking at Queen C4. This, this is kind of unexplored stuff. But also you can play the main lines, like queen e3, and if if knight f6, not knight c3 allowing bishop b4, but instead bishop d2, dissuading black from having bishop b4. Like, black's supposed to play it anyway, but now we can do um, a3 or c3 or something. Yeah, the center attack is interesting. But Jim plays knight f3, black plays d5. So, you know, okay, we've got a scotch, black takes. Um, how is this, actually? It's not a scotch. This is an interesting position. How else would this position arise? So it's not a scotch, I keep calling it a scotch. So I thought it's interesting that black played d5 here. <clears throat> um, unexplored variation. But it look, look at the guy who played black. Alterman has a game here. Pedro Lescano. A whole bunch of 2300s. No, this move looks looks interesting. So I was analyzing this a little bit. Um, what What's the best move? Pawn takes d5, is it? Or queen takes d4? But I was going through this after Jim sent me the game. I was thinking about this line with queen takes d4. It's funny here because there's like seven games with knight f6, which is obviously, you know, natural move um dtc4 a dangerous ending and even bishop e6 was played but what happens if black plays knight c6 theoretical novelty that's never been played you know it's not so simple i looked at this queen d5 queen d5 pawn takes knight b4 and it doesn't seem like white can really prove an advantage check bishop d7 Bishop d7, king d7, this is hanging, this is hanging. Juicebox wizard, welcome. You know, so I don't know, this seems kind of materialistic. Maybe Jim's right, you know, maybe maybe e takes d5 is better. Queen takes d4, knight c6, there is a move, bishop e5. I didn't analyze this. So I guess this is probably critical. Okay, so now it's some weird endgame. Takes... Bishop takes, check, takes. Yeah, this is not convincing. I'm not convinced by this. It looks like something our, our own Hungarian Ivan Farago would, would play for a draw with black. Queen takes e4, check, queen e7. So maybe Jim's move is better. But I think the d5 is worth a whirl. Um, if you, if you want to throw out something kind of different... 
So he plays e takes d. Now knight f6 is possible. <clears throat> Man, only five games that this position has been reached into the master level. That's pretty amazing. Notably, a Kiryakov game, the Liscano game, the Spanish I am. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, queen takes d5 is his standard type of move. So knight c3 fails to queen e6 check. Oh, you seriously did that? Oh my god, this is his game. And maybe Jim wasn't really thinking here. I feel like we're close to transposing. So C3 would would C3 transpose to a to a Danish gambit? It does. It looks like it actually transposes to the Danish gambit. There's a Velimirovic game. Sadly against um Aronian's girlfriend who tragically passed away a couple years ago. Belomirovich known for playing the the Danish <coughs> and a lot of other crazy openings. Um, Queen takes d4 is too boring for our hero in this game. So he plays knight c3. This is just check knight e2. So it's like suspect. I'm going to turn off the engine here. Knight c6, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. So we're, we're in an awkward position here where the, the knight is interfering with our development. Black played seemingly perfectly. Bishop d7. Clearly not the only move though. I mean, black could moti moti excuse me, mobilize his king side instead. Again, that seems more natural, no? Knight f6 seemingly getting the kingside pieces out, you know, just bishop e7 or bishop d6 and castle kingside. He plays this, and then I guess he second thought, you know, second thought about castling queenside because of queen a7. Maybe he was planning on castling queenside then changed his mind. White castles queen side. Bishop d7 starts to look like, well, why did I bother to play that? And then Jim puts his knight back on c3. Castles. Apparently white is slightly ahead in development somehow. Difficult call. <coughs> but I, I mean, maybe queen b6. Queen b6, queen b6, cb6. It seems to be okay. On f5, the queen's a little bit more exposed. Wow, Jim, with a really crazy idea here. <clears throat> g4. This is why. This is why he like submitted the game. It looks like his bullet instincts come out. Sacrificing a pawn to open lines. And um, black looking to maybe panic here with queen queen c5. Do we have g5? What happens on g5? Is it, is it maybe knight h5? <clears throat> it's knight h5. It doesn't look good, but the knight is obviously bad, badly placed here, but black's staying alive. Staying alive. So he plays this, this, and then g5. But still knight h5, it's like transposition. 
take, 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 take. And there's pressure on F7, pressure on B7. <clears throat> Is it enough? Rook F1, check. King B1. And then black now, seemingly blundered. Played Rook AC8, allowing Bishop takes F7, check. That doesn't seem right. I think Jim just missed a simple move now. You're seriously in the dentist? Rook c8? Now Jim has bishop takes f7 check. Chose not to play that. Yeah, I mean, clearly this is a blunder. You're, you're just a clear pawn up here, Jim, after bishop f7. Although it's not easy to win. And actually, two pawns up after rook takes b7. No, that's, that's a winning position, I would, I would think. Maybe still an issue here with this pin. <clears throat> but probably not not a big deal. I don't know. I imagine that white is close to winning. Plus four. Plus four should do it. So blitz game, we missed it. And then he plays this. And now black's just hanging on. The pressure just mounted on F7. This is a nice move. Now knight F7. Willing to trade the two pieces. Man, black has to consider taking this. How does this work? Is this a bluff? I mean, is this working? No, we got c3. <coughs> and the point is you have king c2 next. King e6, king c2. Bye bye. So this is not a bluff. This actually works. Nice. King g7. Yeah, I mean, objectively, we don't really want to trade this. So it's likely that way that's something better, I guess. Perhaps knight g4. I mean, I feel like here, black has really legitimate chances to draw now. Doesn't mean he will, but he, he might, yeah. So that was unfortunate. Then black dropped a piece, which wasn't unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Check is okay, but, but rookie two, check, not such a hot idea. So black needs to play. <clears throat> well, actually, rook f7 is a serious problem, so he, he probably has to play like rookie seven. But I would imagine this is not easy for white to win. So he won a piece, and it's pretty much over. All right, Jim, interesting game, interesting opening. You know, I like that. We've got Excel Poker. Excel Poker playing black pieces. It's our next to last game, followed by move 11. D4, Knight of 6. Oh, this was, he said this was his first Banco Gambit, um, or Banco. <coughs> I don't know, I started coughing two weeks after having COVID. What's going on here? Maybe I got a new disease. Knight F3, I didn't cough all the time I had COVID, and now two weeks later I start coughing. It's really weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about <clears throat> C5 against Knight F3. I mean, you really have to be aware that this is not not this, the easiest to play. Um, B5. I don't know how good this E6, excuse me, E6 
and knight c3 is. It's basically a ready in reverse. So you have g6, e6, or b5. I don't know where the status of this line is, you know, for white. Or both colors for that matter, you know. But if you if you intend to play this move order, you better be booked up. I would be a little hesitant to play c5 without really know, knowing what I'm doing. It's not the same as the Blumenfeld, you know. It could transpose to a Blumenfeld. If white were to play c4, obviously. But it's... It's probably better than the Blumenfeld, you know, for white. Honestly. <clears throat> this line has, has a kind of shady reputation for black. Um, I mean, if you really want to be on the safe side, maybe just playing, uh, you know, Benoni, Schmidt Benoni or whatever. You know, the problem is white doesn't have to play C4. I mean, white, uh, strong players are going to play Knight C3 if you try to play G6. A lot of weaker players don't understand that, but I mean, Knight C3 is a stronger move <clears throat> than just transposing to the Benoni. All right, G3. Instead of g6, 94 is possible. Uh, what? What? Knight e4? Not here. You're talking about this? The vulture? It's a, like, accelerated vulture? <laughs> what is that? <clears throat> sure, you can play the... Let's just play the... The Vajarowitz. All right, knight f3, c5, g3. This is, of course, not dangerous. Um, black should just destroy the center. C takes d. And this equalizes on the spot, I would think. Maybe white should play bishop g2, objectively. What's the deal with this? e5, castles. We keep the pawn. C3. It's like a Mora Gambit. It's a really weird Mora Gambit. Wow, white won every game from this position. <clears throat> Interesting. Black doesn't have to take that pawn. It's a tricky line. Um, interesting Gambit line. So anyway, yeah, I mean, Excel Poker should definitely take on D4, but if he wants to play a hypermodern game, okay, you know, he wants to play a hypermodern game. G6, D5, and now it should be a Schmid Benoni, but G3 is not so dangerous. Actually, at this point, I don't even know if Knight C3 is even good. <clears throat> So it's not a Beko until white plays c4. Now it's now it's a Benoni, and now it's a Benko. Takes, and now a6. Takes, and you don't have to take it, right? But it's the normal thing to do. I mean, obviously, you, you could delay the capture with Nino BD7. <coughs> Bishop takes A6. This is main line, like Fianchetto. Fianchetto, Benko. You know, Kasparov played the Fianchetto, Benko against, like, Topalov years ago. It was, like, the only the only way he would play the Benko. I don't think the Fianchetto variation all that dangerous for black. Though here white still has a solid plus score. BD7. Now rook e1. Main line looks like rook b1. <clears throat> this is definitely a standard move. I remember I was white against Esserman like five, six, seven years ago in a tournament in the in Massachusetts when I went home. I played a reverse Benko against him 
we had a basically we had the reversed this reversed where I was a tempo up he did the same thing kingside fianchetto with like rookie eight getting the rook off the diagonal it was like the same position of course an extra tempo is always nice um <clears throat> I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was a crazy game. I was better than I was worse than it was a draw. Queen b6. Here... The next game was horrible, though. I lost like an idiot against Thomas Gillish, really. Because I had to play... I always do that. I like If I have a really long game in a two rounds a day tournament, and the first, the morning game is really long, and I play a strong opponent, I just like fold like a house of cards. After like some really hard fought game in the, in the morning round, I'll lose like an idiot with white pieces in the second game, almost for sure. <clears throat> Actually, against Gillish, really... I was white too, yeah. I do that a lot. I really gotta stop doing that. So I don't know, queen b6, queen a5. How do we choose the plan here for black? Knight b6? I have a fetish for like putting my queen on a8, <laughs> but it's probably not good here. I guess queen b6 is normal. I think this, this is more common. Wait out some, but yeah, puts the bishop on c3 and wins. I think that's more in like the, the other lines. I don't know if that's how it goes in the Fianchetto variation, Uber driver. So queen b6, e4. Yeah, now you have knight g4, knight e5, knight e3, which is standard. <clears throat> history class in high school standard oil yeah I mean this this is just kindergarten maneuver white didn't know about that yeah I mean he should play h h3 and then you have to think about like another path for your knight through there so like what do we do now Rook f b8, clearing the way for like knight e8, knight c7, knight b5, e4, knight e8. Exactly. Queen c2, knight c7, <coughs> heading for b5, rook b1. Ah, oh, Velomirovich against Bilek Ishvan. 2500. Yeah, I think this is correct play. Yeah, he needs to get his bishop to, to d2 and c3, like Uber Driver said. Yeah, that's what happens. White should have played. Well, this is a threat now. So knight takes b5. Bishop takes b5. Because of bishop f1. You're threatening queen a6. Yeah, th this is basically how you're supposed to play it. Bilek. Maybe we should call it the Bilak Gambit. They're, they're naming it after the wrong Hungarian. All right, queen b6, e4, knight g4, knight d2, uh-oh. Tolu. That doesn't look good. I was teaching one of my beginner students to start to identify like the weak squares in the position. I mean, identify the weak squares. Take this position, for example. Interesting question. How many squares on the board at this moment are not protected by anything? You know, let's let's take a look. One. Well, I mean, that's protected by our bishop. But white doesn't have it protected by anything. G5 is not protected by anything. But D3 is really screaming out as, like, the biggest weakness. Here. Yeah, H5. I don't know, man. H5 is really a little over the top. <clears throat> I don't want to screw around. Like, why did you reject 95?
Yeah, g5 and d3 are the only really weak squares. I guess if you want to be really crazy, you could do like your other knight to e5, and then when he plays h3, sack a piece or something. I don't know if this is sound. It's interesting. Computer likes it. Wow. The computer really likes this. Damn. Maybe I'm right. Sometimes I'm just right. I get lucky. The best move is knight on de5. I mean, I don't play... Whoa! Knight takes f2. Mama. Look at that. Suction. H5. What kind of move is that? Knight takes f2. Everybody saw it but you. Get some some cojones here. Just sack the knight on f2. Wow. So king f2 and you like suck him out with bishop d4 check. But it's not that clear. I mean, he can walk out to f3. That looks ugly. Okay, but obviously he has rook here. You'd have to calculate further. This isn't this isn't over yet. Like knight here, knight f1. It's pretty complicated. Honestly, knight d3 check. I guess you just have to trust your intuition on this one. I think like the player who's played the Benko all his life probably knows like this is good, I'm gonna do it, and they don't really need to calculate much further. But I like the other move. You know, knight d e five. Now I was really on board. You know, take, take, check. King g1. <clears throat> you have bishop d4 check. c4 check. It looks promising. That's actually a mistake. The engine wants to take this. Wow. Look at those bishops. It's just vicious. h3 would have been a good idea. Yeah, but he played h5, taking easy on him. You can still sack it, obviously. <coughs> yeah, I mean, white's, white's position has a lot of weaknesses. And then, like, even just h4. I mean, just, just simply h4 undermines his king side. I mean, even that simple move is strong. But you have bishop d4. I don't know if you want to give up your bishop. And you're going to eventually take that exchange. Damn. Yeah, all the pieces are working. He does take it, though. Always take it. Now you've got queen d4. Massively powerful centralized queen. <clears throat> also a good defender in this instance here. You might need that queen defending. Wait, that's like bishop e4, knight e4. Give him a little bit of play. He just doesn't, he does he never did it. He never did his, did his queen into d4. It might be too late now though, because knight e6. Rook f8 is good enough. Yeah, I mean, you're just winning. He sacked his queen. Nothing there. A little mate threat. Nice. Yeah, that was a good game. Played like a Benko natural. <clears throat> Our last game for today is move 11. But I've got to get the right game. Because he's... He's returned it. No, exchanged. This is not Macy's. Exchanges cost like 200 bits, move 11. You realize that. I'm submitting a 5 plus 3 game I played on Lee Chess. Oh no, I'd like to change my submission for this one. A very interesting game, Timur Garyev had white versus a friend of mine who remains anonymous. 
The time control was game 100 plus 30, so... <clears throat> Sounds like Continental Chess. We'll look it up. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm getting sick one day after getting over COVID. Maybe I've got pneumonia now, or maybe I have the, um, influenza. What is this? Queen's Gambit accepted? All right, we'll just leave it in this window. So Gareev was white. Yeah, this is a uh, <clears throat> white is um, Timur Gareev, the guy who's he's really weird. He he does these like crazy, insane blindfold simultaneouses. He'll play like forty blindfold boards against like noobs. <clears throat> he seems really eccentric. Um. But really good player. Um, plays crazy openings. He's he's kind of strange. Black is uh, no name. So it's Queen's Gambit accepted. And Gareev plays a very aggressive line here. Um, I think like e4 is is the most aggressive line against the the Queen's Gambit accepted. But this is probably number two, the second most aggressive line. I mean Knight f3, Knight f6, and then Knight c3. And then white's going to play e4. So it's another kind of gambit style approach. <clears throat> you can't really get more aggressive than this. Um, and, and a6 is, Uber driver says I get murdered with a d5 thrust. a6 is main line. So I don't know, black, I think I tried to play like c5 when I was preparing this. I was looking at e6, e4, c5. Actually, we can transpose to like a, that's another option. You can transpose to a um, move 11 likes these kind of Rugosan Vienna variation. <clears throat> but anyways, the move played in the game is the main line. Um, A6, E4, and now B5. I can play like one or two games blindfolded. I would probably have to practice to do two. I've never been a blindfold expert. I might have I might have played one blindfold match against someone. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, main line e5. So it's a lot like the Geller Gambit in the Slav. It's just like Black has played a6 instead of c6. Which in one way is an advantage that you have the open diagonal here. I studied this like a long time ago. The disadvantage is that like c6 better supports like the d5 square. So black has slightly less protection there. This is main line. Knight d5, a4, and then um, move 11. Can we transpose to one of your openings? Like one of these e6 takes, knight b6 or something? Come to think of it, is that is that just a weird way of playing your line? They're playing my line. It took me a long time to to be able to play a blindfold game. I was definitely a national master before I could do it. <clears throat> I was just thinking move 11, that, that's a transposition, right? Well, there are some similarities to Aliakin's defense, I guess. I was just thinking like this would give direct transposition to that. But I think the move chosen in the game is like, I don't know anything about this. Black has to be careful of this E6. 
this was one of the lines that I studied 20 years ago when I was thinking of playing the Queen's Gambit Accepted. Black has like F6. <coughs> I think this used to be considered to be... It's funny, this Belazarov guy who's the first game in the list. I had a game on... I had a game on on the site against him. But it looks like F takes E6. Wow. That may be like a newer newer move. Looks like there's games in there from a long time ago. It's not so new. Alright. So Bishop E7 is kind of risky because you, you weaken control of, of E6. E6 transposes to that other line. And they take C3 is like the main line. This is like a Geller Gambit. B takes C. Um, sorry, Knight takes C3. B takes C. C takes B5. And now Knight G5. Clearly the main line. If E6, Queen here. I am kind of out of book now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe 963 is just considered like a mistake. No, that's that appears to be the main line. Knight takes c3, b takes c. Oh, okay, yeah. He played Wait, what happened here? I'm a little confused. Black played Oh, black played c6. That's weird. Okay. <clears throat> Right. I mean, he's trans... What is he doing? He's transposing to the Geller Gambit with C6? No, C6 is not usual. This is the main line. Takes, takes, and Queen D5. Or Bishop E7. So I don't know anything about where we are here. C6 is an unusual move. Take, take, take take knight g5 wow <coughs> interesting so obviously if you play e6 there's knight takes f7 knight f7 king f7 and queen f3 check taking the rook at a8 um so black has to be like this is super dangerous he has to be very careful Rook a7. So, we're following some games. <clears throat> Notably, Spiddler losing in 2019. What What is it when Spiddler doesn't play the Grunfeld? Is that playing for a win or a draw? Knight f7 anyway? Are you serious? Even, even um, <clears throat> Gareev wouldn't do that. So this was played naturally in all four of these games. Very disruptive move. <clears throat> I have no idea what Black's going to do. I mean, if pawn takes, f7 is so weak. I guess your king runs out here or what? The king will just try to run away. Peter played this. <clears throat> Ended up losing anyway. <clears throat> it's, it's strange to see Swidler get kind of outplayed in the opening. White just has a really nice bishop pair here. Even though he's down a pawn. But I don't know, Gareev either just didn't know it or he got carried away and he played d5. <clears throat> Certainly an interesting move though. So he's trying to annihilate black here. 
Now H6. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you got to start looking at knight E6 and stuff. White plays bishop E3, hitting the rook. Wow. So if you're going to put the rook on a square, like you're looking at rook D7. Oh, man, that's just... That's sick. This is like straight out of a simul, literally. Rook d7, knight e6, game over. That would be so perverse. Yeah. Pawn takes pawn. The queen is mated, then the king is mated. I mean, that's just horrible. So after this, you know, he sees like that's a problem. b7 is playable. <clears throat> I mean, that would actually be my preferred choice to put the rook on b7. I don't know why he preferred this square. Now the knight is hanging. So Garyev sacks a piece now, like Uber Driver suggested. I mean, you, you know, you always have, like, different possibilities. You have to watch for, like, that. This this is a problem here. There's rook d1. I mean, unclear. But even this position would be, would be messy. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I kind of expected him to, like, retreat the knight. But it looks like white... Maybe white doesn't have enough compensation. What happens if like e6? <clears throat> e6 is not enough. So he sacks the piece here, I don't know. It certainly looks interesting. Takes, e6 check. Obviously, you have to go back to g8. e8 is just mate. And I guess the question at the end of the day is, like, does white have enough compensation for this piece? You know, he's down a whole piece for one pawn. But black's, like, bishop on f8 can't move. His rook is totally stuck in the corner. White's threatening bishop b6. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly he has bishop b6 if he wants it. But the problem is, I guess, like bishop b7. You know, you take and black starts to kind of unravel. I'm not sure, you know, I mean, he can, he can wiggle out with like h5, rook h6. <coughs> it's not clear. So Gareo is like a maniac. He doesn't go, he plays queen h5, he doesn't go for the material. Now bishop e7, now rook d1, and now he no longer has the option to win material with bishop e6. Way plays bishop e2, queen e8, offering to trade queens, queen h3. And we have ideas of bishop h5, possibly, possibly rook d4. So he stops that, castles, bishop g7, f4, which feels a little desperate, but man, I have no knight. You know, where's my knight? <clears throat> it looks like white is still, white is still better. Rook d8, bishop f3, and all of a sudden, we have three connected pass pawns. That's a brave move. Here, 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 here. Wow. It looks like white has like f6 in some moment. Yeah, it's a super insane position. I mean, d6 is coming. Why doesn't he have d6 here?
guess it just doesn't really do anything. <clears throat> Black can always afford to get back a piece, like sack a knight on d7. So now he starts to begin threats of bishop d4 check. And black does, <clears throat> naturally. Black is willing to give back a piece now. And that's what happened. Ed7. <coughs> Queen d7, bishop d4 check. Man. The queen is hanging. So king h6. If queen d7, bishop d4 check. So material is finally like plus two pawns for black. Check here and perpetual. Wow, I mean, that was crazy. I don't even want to know what the computer said. I mean, I think that white must have been close to winning. But it was certainly a fun game. <clears throat> Very interesting. Um... But it's, it's strange for me that black played that c6. With c6, are we directly transposing to the Geller gambit? Knight c3, c6, e4, b5, e5, knight d5, a4. Normally that would be e6. And after an he5, <clears throat> black doesn't actually play this move a6. So that's the thing about this position, like a6 just isn't played. It's like a hybrid, <clears throat> but it's very rare to play that move here. I mean, let's see who played C6. This is Swiddler. It's interesting. I mean, Swiddler is hardly an expert in the, <clears throat> in the Queen's Gambit accepted. He's mostly playing the Grunfeld. It doesn't seem right to play C6 here. Yeah, if he played e6, he would have knight takes f7. So I don't know if black was, like, prepared. Castling is better for the heart. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Let's see what the engine says. Yeah, they, the, the engine prefers e6. So it looks like Gareyev just, you know, played the second best move. It's very complex. It's very possible he knows like e6 is the move, but he just wanted to try this. <clears throat> it looks like e6 is very strong. d5 is like a secondary reputation. h6 is best. Bishop e3 is best. Rook c7 is best. Oh, wow. <clears throat> So knight e6 instead. Knight e6. Pawn e6. Queen h5 check. King d7. Castle's queen side. I wonder if Gareyev would have seen this in blindfold chess. <laughs> <coughs> that's pretty amazing. So black has to take with the bishop. But that's an ending. You know, not 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 really that attractive, I guess. For a grandmaster, black has these pawns on the queen side. I mean, I don't know. Trade the queens there. It's really interesting. Thanks, everybody, for sharing your games. I will be back, hopefully, um, 
I'll be back tomorrow morning with, with some blitz challenges against subscribers and, and everyone. Friends, countrymen, and uh, noobs. Thanks everybody for watching and tuning in. Thanks for your support, for subscribing. Thanks for the gift sub from Astrobate. Appreciate it. I will be back Friday, blitz stream, and Sunday, simul stream, if, my, if I don't lose my voice due to extended COVID. Again, guys, thank you. I'll see everybody later. Thank you very much for tuning in, my friends. Bye-bye. <clears throat>